You've got beans on the left, you've got corn on the right, and this is interesting because the selling's coming right into this WASDI report that's due out today. Oftentimes, it gets some volatility associated with that, and well, we've got just the person to help us get ahead of that release here this morning. I want to talk fundamentals behind the technicals, some of the selling we've been seeing in grains. Jake Hanley joins us, Managing Director, Senior Portfolio Strategist at Tecrium Trading, LLC. Jake, good to have you back. Morning. Welcome. Uh, what's behind the move lower we just looked at? Beans getting crushed and, well, corn's getting creamed. Yeah, Ben, that's pretty funny. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll tell you what, it, the the issue that we have here is an issue that we've been writing about and speaking about for a while now, and that is that we are in stage three of the golden grain cycle. For anyone not familiar with the golden grain cycle, uh, you should follow us on, on social media where we posted a video recently talking about this. And it's a fundamental concept, okay? It's very simple. Grain prices tend to trade at or near the cost of production for an extended period of time. The reason is, is that governments all over the world subsidize agriculture. No one wants to see their people go hungry. And so farmers, in essence, are paid to plant. So farmers plant, and there's always, uh, you know, typically plenty of supply relative to demand. And so as there's a world of plenty of supply, prices trade sideways near the cost of production. Well, what happens? Eventually, there is a weather disruption in the United States. We, we know we get droughts from time to time, and that creates a production issue. That production issue leads to prices spiking. Okay, so as prices rise, recognizing the fact that supplies are dwindling uh, and demand is outpacing production, that's stage two, prices rising. We saw that through 2020, through 2022. Uh, in addition to the weather concerns, unfortunately, we had concerns about war in Ukraine, all right, and all that helps support prices. Well, we are in stage three, as I mentioned, and stage three is when farmers plant more to capture those, those higher prices mm -hmm. and increase their revenue uh, and rebuild supplies. And so we've been rebuilding supplies globally for, for the last 18 months or so, and prices are reflecting that and trending lower. We think our base case for 2024 is that we will reach that level of cost of production again and begin to trade sideways at some point here, um, you know, perhaps over the, the summer of the second half of, of 2024. You know, it's kind of funny, and, uh, you know, we, we oftentimes equate that to very similarly to energy prices, right? We talk about lower prices create uh, increased demand. That increased demand ultimately creates more production, which, uh, you know, so you see those price fluctuations here. Uh, uh, um, we'll continue to watch that, those phases play out. But I wanted to talk about another product, which I'm not sure how closely you follow this one. It, and again, kind of along those lines, not the most heavily traded by any means, but brought to my attention recently, cocoa to new all-time highs. Yeah, well, cocoa to all time highs is is uh, really trouble because I love chocolate and Valentine's Day is around the corner. Um, so, you know, it, 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 I think that's a great example of weather wreaking havoc on, on agriculture. And, you know, as you broke down the price chart there, and you always do that so well, as a uh, chartist myself, I love commodities because the fundamentals are simply supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And when you have weather disruptions in, in key growing areas such as South America uh, for, for cocoa, um, you have production issues. And as demand increases, you know, again, Valentine's Day is around the corner, um, you know, and supplies aren't meeting demand, you're going to have prices move higher. It is that simple in commodities, which is why I'm a commodities guy. Kind of tying back into that uh, corn discussion as well, beans. Uh, also, in terms of production there, let's talk a little bit about today's WASD report. Uh, what are we expecting? Yeah, so February is not typically an exciting month for, for the okay. WASD. Um, however, that said, there are some wide-ranging estimates from analysts as it relates to South American production. Uh, again, talking about weather. Uh, we are in the throes of an El Nino, um, you know, and, and perhaps even looking back to get into a La Nina at the end of the year, but that's uh, to be seen. So El Nino is having an impact on South American production, uh, in particular the northern parts of Brazil as it relates to soybeans. And so analysts are looking uh, for the Brazilian soybean production to be revised lower. The United States is still showing about 157 million metric tons as of the January WASD. Uh, low analyst estimates have that coming all the way down to 150. Um, importantly, CONAB, the Brazilian Agency for Agriculture, similar to the USDA, just released numbers this morning that are below the lowest average analyst, excuse me, below the lowest, av the average analyst, excuse me, below the lowest 
analyst estimate for the USDA at 149. So being below the 150, which is the lowest for USDA, uh, market participants are expecting a, a drastic cut for soybeans. That said, I will tell you that when you look at the global balance sheets, uh, there's plenty of soybeans in, in the world. And so even if you took the Brazilian soybean production all the way back below 150, it's not going to have a major impact on the global balance sheets. There's still plenty of soybeans. Uh, and so we don't see this really being a, a volatile report as it relates to prices, because again, we're in stage three and there's there's plenty of soybeans. Jake, we just looked at SOYB, the Tecrium ETF. Uh, we've got uh, recent, the range, it looks like 23, 29. We're kind of hanging in the middle thereof, right around 25. Uh, here you can see that again. Talk to us about what's going on. Uh, what do you expect for corn and wheat today? Yeah, similar story in corn. Do uh, you have production issues for Brazilian corn. And again, even if you get down to the low CONAB estimates, it's not really gonna change the global picture. Uh, wheat, however, wheat is the one where there is some bullish fundamentals. Uh, the wheat supply demand situation globally, uh, we're looking for tighter global supplies in this crop year. And so that is fundamentally supportive for wheat. Of course, wheat has been trading lower along with the complex, uh, but for, again, from a global supply demand uh, perspective, it has the best fundamentals uh, in that there is uh, consumption exceeding demand. And Ben, you know, you brought up something I just want to go back to briefly, and that was as it relates to oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at, as you see with oil prices, and we've witnessed in the ETF markets, um, as oil gets near the cost of production, investors have the idea that that's a potentially good time to buy, you know, as something is trading near its cost of production. Well, we've seen that play out with, with our funds as well. And so we do anticipate that as these prices stabilize and begin to trade sideways as they have historically, um, we expect investors to uh, continue to allocate to those uh, commodities as prices are moving sideways in anticipation of the cycle playing out again that said as well seasonals right now typically you have good seasonal strength between february uh going into the early summer period and you know the hedge funds that are short these markets right now playing momentum okay know those seasonal uh technicals very well and so if prices do start to rally a little bit here that could feed on itself by way of short covering so even though this is all bearish and the fundamentals are bearish there is always that technical trading aspect to pay close attention to uh which could lead to prices rallying in the near term. Jake, I'm glad you brought the discussion back around to crude because uh, that's actually where I was headed in some ways, uh, kind of indirectly crude. We've been talking a lot about how at these levels very much uh, uh, stomaching very well the uh, events that have been playing out in the Middle East, and we haven't really seen an impact much on price yet. How much of a, a event or game changer is it for grains? Some of what we've seen in terms of shipping lanes and having to go around uh, uh, that longer trip around uh, Africa, ultimately, what does that do for the grains uh, markets and uh, uh, impacts there? Yeah, no, thanks for asking that. As as shipping costs go up, that does tend to bleed through uh, to the underlying commodity prices. And so it's certainly something to, to pay attention to. However, take your cues off of the price of oil. And so, you know, okay. oil trading relatively in, in this safe range of 70, 75, 65, 85, however you want to look at it when you pull back the charts, um, it's not really going anywhere. And so until you have a breakout one way or another um, from, from oil, I think you're gonna see the major trends continue to play through with, with the grains. Uh, and it's interesting that the markets are not trading the headlines um, out of out of the Red Sea or, or the Black Sea. We still have a war raging in, in uh, Ukraine as well. Um, and so those prices tell me that we have plenty of crude oil in the world and we're, we're comfortable at these levels. Jake, kind of just to uh, end where we started off here, I mentioned how the grains on our show have been kind of overshadowed by what we've been watching as far as the indices, the new all-time highs, expectations for rate cuts and all the focus on the Fed. We've got some data headed our way in just a couple minutes here, but talk to us about your uh, thoughts on the broader market, the rally we've seen, three of the four major indices into new all-time highs again this week. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm smiling because, you know, a lot of people love to hate a bull market. Uh, and you said something earlier, you said continuation is more likely than change. Yeah. And so this, this isn't really helpful, but it is something to keep in mind that prices will continue to go up until they don't. Yeah. Uh, 
And, and I love the fact that when you look at stocks, okay, stocks trade based on supply and demand. A lot of people like to talk about fundamentals and that's, that's fine. But when the fact is boiled down, you have a limited number of stocks trading at any time and the price is reflected of the demand for those stocks. It's the same thing with commodity prices, which is why paying attention to the charts is really important. Uh, you could say that NVIDIA evaluation makes no sense whatsoever, but yet the price closed over 700 yesterday. Yeah. So I'm... I'm happy to own it. Brought to my attention uh, many years ago that trend is your friend here, and that still continues to be the case here. Uh, obviously, when we're looking at some of the price activity we did, uh, Jake, appreciate you joining us here. Thanks for sharing part of your Thursday. Jake Hanley, Managing Director, Senior Portfolio Strategist, Tecrium Trading LLC.